Hey, hey, what's going on down the Spotlight Faithful? It's your main man, Tommy, on the spot. Uh, it's a beautiful Wednesday morning, well, actually kind of a dreary Wednesday morning here in New York City. I uh, wanted to pop on with each and every one of you and uh, talk all things professional wrestling. Uh, before we get there, though, I did want to just quickly touch on the fact that uh, I found out, you know, yesterday, obviously, May 23rd, was the 18 year, it's insane to think it's been 18 year, uh, anniversary of the untimely passing of Owen Hart. So I wanted to kind of just take a minute and uh, and, and remember remember the life and times of, of Owen Hart. And it's it's pretty crazy that uh, it's been so long. Uh, it, it almost feels like, you know, wrestling fans, unfortunately, when, when you think about a wrestler passing away, I think you automatically go to three different wrestlers. Uh, you go to Chris Benoit because of the, of the tragic and the, the insane nature of the way, obviously, with the murder-suicide, uh, the homicide suicide uh, and then you go with Eddie Guerrero because of the fact that he had done so much to clean his life up and it really kind of came back and really reached the pinnacle of his career and then he tragically passes kind of out of nowhere and then you go with Owen Hart and you go with Owen Hart because Owen Hart wasn't the type of wrestler death so to speak and I hate to say it that way that we're all accustomed to uh, Owen Hart didn't have any issues with with uh, you know, PEDs, or didn't have any issues with, you know, that lifestyle of being on the road. He was a family man. He was a hell of a good man, uh, by all accounts. He was a great guy in the locker room, known for his ribs, and known for, you know, being a bit of a prankster, and, uh, but he'd done very well, and uh, was beloved throughout his entire time uh, in WWF and, and, and in life in general. It seems like every single thing you hear about Owen Hart, it almost feels like he was almost too good of a guy. To be a part of the wrestling business and so uh eight, it's been it's crazy that it's been 18 years i remember to this day watching over the edge 1999 uh, my father uh when it was first announced that owen hart had passed away my father called up titan sports um which was something we did from time to time back in the day there was a phone number you can call titan sports and leave a voicemail if you were unhappy with something uh titan sports obviously is wwe um, you can call their headquarters and leave a voicemail if you were unhappy with something. And uh, my father was very unhappy because he believed that uh, the Owen Hart thing was an angle and was it was a storyline and was part of the show, so to speak. Specifically because of how quickly they moved along and continued the show. In his mind, he was just like, there's no way this could be real. If somebody had fallen to their untimely death in the middle of a show they wouldn't continue the show. And so he kept saying, I bet he comes out at the end, I bet he comes out at the end, and then I kept sitting there, tears streaming down my face at only 12 years old and praying to God that Owen Hart was gonna be making a run in, at the end of the show, and then when he didn't, thinking, boy, I really hope my father's got this one right, and then obviously we turned on the news and found out that it was not the case, and uh, then he, all throughout, it kind of, you know, from there just kind of snowballed, and obviously they had the the first and probably, in my opinion, you know, one of the most emotional nights in the history of WWE was that first, um, that first tribute show to Owen Hart, that, that one that was on, uh, on Raw, where the whole, the whole, you know, roster standing up there, and you can see people streaming tears down their face, and saying nice stories about Owen Hart, though it almost felt like we were all a part of his wake in a strange way, um, by being able to see these moments, and, uh, and then Steve Austin coming out with the big salute, the cheers there with the beer, and uh, leaving the beer in the ring for Owen. So, uh, uh, you know, it's sad. Even 18 years later, it's uh, it still does get to you a little bit. It always makes me. It always made me think. You know, where do we go from here? Where you know, wh where where what would have happened had Owen not passed away? Uh, you know, would he have remained a part of the roster? Uh, for many years, uh, would he have transitioned into a color commentator role? Because he was awesome at that. If you go back and you watch King of the Ring 1996, which I just did, you know, following along with something to wrestle with, uh, Bruce Pritchard, I would always watch and and uh, I, I watched that show and Owen did a phenomenal job on color commentary. Would have made a great color commentator. Would have done great in whatever he had continued. But of course, all that pales in comparison to the fact that he had two young kids two at the time of his passing uh but yeah Owen Hart still missed it this day he was the first heel uh bad guy so to speak that I remember seeing there and going what's going on here I kind of like this guy and he'd sit there and he'd and he'd uh his arguments about Bret Hart you'd sit there and you'd be like you know what this is kind of weird uh because he's right <laughs> and he was making a lot of sense 
Bret Hart really was stealing the spotlight from him. Bret Hart was getting all of these different accolades. Uh, Owen did beat Bret at WrestleMania 10, and then Bret won the title. So Owen did deserve a title match. So it was one of these really kind of interesting uh, dynamics, and I thought it was a great heel. I thought it was a great baby face. I thought it was great, and uh, it's missed to this day. And uh, no easy way to transition to more of the modern day stuff, but I did want to just share a little bit about Owen Hart with you guys. Just some uh, personal memories with me. I remember when we were kids, uh, every Yom Kippur, you'd put a candle down for the family members that had passed away, a Yitzar candle, I believe it's called. Um, and uh, you put some for your loved ones, and there was always one for Owen Hart in our house. And uh, so, you know, uh, just still sad. Still really sad that that, that happened, uh, a really tragic accident. And uh, he's missed. So... No easy way to transition, but I did want to quickly mention the fact that WWE officially announced yesterday the May Young Classic, a WWE Women's Tournament. I don't think they've really put out any sort of press release yet, or even the details 100%, but I believe it'll be similar to the Cruiserweight Classic that was last year. And these tournaments are a lot of fun. I, I think these tournaments are really interesting, and I think WWE is continuing to try to apply appeal to a, na a niche, and they did it with the Cruiserweight Classic. They came back, they really did a great job with the UK tournament, uh, considering that one was a 16-man tournament, and they did that, uh, or it might have even been an 8-man tournament, but they did it over two days, so that was cool. Uh, so this will be something to keep us going during the summer, uh, a little bit of additional programming for the network. Uh, they did announce JR is calling the action, which obviously, if you guys know from my update on Monday, how much I love JR, how much I think he adds to the product. And uh, it's going to be great to have him back to call in the action. And really interesting to see all the different styles from around the world. They've announced this is going to be a real international flair. Um, Triple H, uh, during his conference call for NXT last week, really announced that there's an emphasis on getting women from all around the world, similar to how they did it with the Cruiserweight Classic. And, uh, you know, women's wrestling has really continued to improve really in, in from a WWE standpoint in the last couple of years. And it's great to see a focus on the woman and great to see that, you know, I think there was a SmackDown show that had two or three different matches on the event. And I know that at WrestleMania, there were people, I was there live, there were people really worried that the woman match had gotten scrapped when it seemed like a lot of the matches were going long and were getting later in the evening. And no one was like, hey, I really hope they just forget about that women's match. Everyone was, man, I really hope they don't decide to scrap that women's match. Uh, so people are, are obviously really invested uh, in women's wrestling right now. It's really great to see uh, the women's uh, revolution, if you will, has just continued to expand. I think Alexa Bliss is doing an awesome job. Uh, probably one of the top people, uh, you know, one of their top brands right now is Alexa Bliss. Uh, over the entire, during WrestleMania weekend, there were many, many Alexa Bliss shirts, Alexa Bliss merchandise everywhere you looked, and obviously you still have that with the original Four Horsewoman. So, really, really cool to see. I'm excited to see where this tournament goes. I'm excited to see if any of the women in WWE will be a part of the tournament. And then I'm excited to see if there's a spinoff. Will this be? Will there be an, a woman's show? Will there be a woman's wrestling brand for WWE, similar to what we see with 205 Live now? Obviously, I believe there's a market for it, and uh, I think it could be a lot of fun. So, in any event, uh, kind of got a little sidetracked with the Owen Hart memories there, but I thought it was important to touch on. Um, and uh, let me know what you guys think uh, about this women's tournament. Are you guys excited for it? Do you, a lot of people seem a little up in arms that it's the Mae Young Classic and not the Trish Stratus Classic. Uh, but what do you think? Let me know in the comment section below or hit me up on the Twitter at Tommy on the spot. That's going to do it for us today here on the Wrestling Drive. I hope you guys have a very good Wednesday and we'll catch you on the flip.